This is a very important video because artificial intelligence, AI, will now play a major role in virtually all major news events. And this is just one example. So I want to start off by saying that this is not a political video in any way. This channel deals with uh, educational methodologies and educational technologies such as AI and has nothing to do with politics. But I definitely wanted to take this event, this attempted assassination of Donald Trump, I wanted to take this special news event to showcase and highlight how artificial intelligence is now a major issue, a major part whenever any type of big event like this happens. So let me give you one example. In a news article from the Washington Post labeled Misinformation Spread Swiftly in Hours After Trump Rally Shooting, talks about this statement here. It talks about how AI chatbots had not yet caught up with the events of Saturday night when queried by a Post reporter. Asked whether someone tried to shoot Trump, ChatGPT said there has not been a recent attempt to shoot former president. OpenAI did not immediately respond to a request for comment. It goes on to say that Amazon's Alexa voice assistant had mixed results. It correctly responded to a query about whether Trump was shot by citing a report from Reuters and The Post about the gunfire at the Pennsylvania rally. But when the question was phrased slightly differently, it referenced a 2016 campaign rally event where a man tried to grab a gun from a police officer in an attempt to shoot Trump. So this is a key point just to begin with, in that more and more people, not just students, but people in general, will start to use AI as a search engine, as a default search engine, right? Yes, Google will still be there, but a lot of people will now start to use AI just to do their search, which is okay if they're using the right type of AI that is directly tied in, but if they're using an AI that might not be as updated as some other one, then they might get false information. Uh, this was the example that they showed here, where a news reporter tried to get information about the event from an AI, but the AI hadn't caught up yet as far as what information it was using in order to give a response. So that's a key part right there, just to understand about, again, with AI literacy, about using the right type of AI, of getting the right type of information, where is the best place to get information? Now, I've always argued that we shouldn't be using AI to get information to begin with, because it's not a source of information, it uses other sources of information. So this is a key thing to think about as well. Now, OpenAI is already in multiple negotiations, multiple contracts to get news information to, to be able to train on all, all, all of that. But we have to also think, well, where should we be getting our sources of information? It should be from more credible sources that are direct, like news sources, uh, in order to be able to get the newest information and the most accurate information. And again, by looking at multiple sources. That's a key part, and I'll go into that here in a little bit as well. Another big thing that has come out from this, from, from this event specifically, and has been mentioned by many different news articles as well, is about conspiracy theories, right? There's, there's tons of conspiracy theories that have already surfaced all over the internet talking about, well, who organized this? Is this, uh, is this backed by someone else? Or what, what, are the, what are the aspects associated with this? This is a key point that we need to make sure that we are teaching our students that, hey, there might be all sorts of conspiracy theories, and it's okay to have an opinion or a thought about possibilities, but you should never be pushing those ideas as if they're facts, right? So we need to make sure that we are developing a critical mindset with our students, that they understand the difference between someone's thoughts, ideas, a conspiracy perhaps, versus facts. This is what we know. This is the current evidence that we have. We can't jump to these assumptions. We can have some ideas and thoughts as to why something occurred, but we can't be pushing that as reality. So we shouldn't be sharing information without having good evidence. And even when we share inform information, we need to make sure that we are also pushing, well, where's that source? Where's this coming from? In order for everyone to have a better understanding of where the information originated, and what is the level of the authority of that information. So again, th this is really important in order to properly address, address conspiracy theory. Now in this event, there was a lot of video, a lot of video, a lot of photos that were taken about the event. Um, Trump was giving a presentation at a rally, and so there was lots of cameras on him, lots of uh, cell phones, lots of people taking photos. 
And so when the assassination attempt occurred, we have direct evidence, you know, first person accounts there of what happened. But what if there were? What if, they, what if there was no video coverage of this? Well, then there would be lots of deep fakes coming out. And even now, there are some modifications that might be occurring with some of the imagery. So we have to be aware of that. We have to be careful with that. So that, that leads me directly to talking about the trap test. The trap test is something that I've talked about before. So here's a link to that actual video. And I'll put that in the description as well. But this is designed to help you to spot deep fakes as well as to not be deceived. And this goes for deep fakes as well as synthetic information, whether it's an image, a video, or just content. We have to realize now that if it's digital, if there's anything that's digital, regardless of the medium, the format, if it's digital, then it could be faked. It could be created nefariously through the improper use of AI. So us in academia, as well as our students, we have to make sure that they know this. And then this is a convenient acronym that can be used to help someone go through and verify what they're looking at, right? So we have the first one here, T, which is to think critically. It means critical awareness, just like we're pushing, just like a major aspect of AI literacy itself, meaning that we have this mindset of ensuring objectivity, right? Objective truth when we're reading, seeing, or hearing anything. The next one here is R, realistic, reliable, reputable. Does this seem real? Is it likely to be occurring? What's the source? Is this reliable? Is it reputable? Is the source credible and trustworthy? Is, is this just something that came off of the internet that was just on Twitter or just on some other social media? Or is this something that, hey, every single news authority is coming out with this. This is all over the internet, but can we verify it? Is it coming from a reputable source? And then that goes into the next one, accurate and authority. Accurate and authority. Are all parts of the media accurate? Any inconsistencies? Does this correlate with other things we know is the source and authority? Again, going back to the source. So the source can't just be social media. The source needs to come from a reputable place. And then again, we can trace it back to where it's coming from. Is it coming directly from the government? Is it coming from a media source? Multiple sources that can be verified. So that's an important part. And then the other big part here is the P for purpose and propaganda. What is the purpose of this media? Is it trying to sell me something to change my view or vote? Is it just propaganda, bias, misleading? Is there more to the story? Very powerful part there. We need to understand what, what, what is going on here. Does this correlate with other parts? Is this just propaganda? Or is this a real event that actually occurred? And again, more evidence, witnesses, first, second hand accounts, all these things that come in. So the trap test is again, just another way that we can help our students, help ourselves to develop critical thinking, to help address the sources of information, to make sure that this is something real and not just something that's made up. Again, we have to have this mindset of ensuring that if it's digital in any way, we need to verify and a trap test is a great way to do that. Now, a final part that I really want to discuss, and this deals more with an ethical aspects within critical thinking, ethical aspects as far as artificial intelligence and these type of events, especially with something that was uh, quite a violent situation uh, that occurred with this uh, attempted assassination. So we're developing more and more AI systems that can help to detect and help to predict violence that might be occurring. Um, there's uh, several different uh, companies out there that have this capability. One such company is Skyla, which is an AI system that monitors everything that's going on and then helps to predict certain things that might occur, such as violent events. Now, the ethical aspects to this, and again, there's been lots of research, lots of different reports dealing with this, are talking about some of the ethical aspects in that, is it appropriate to use it in this way? Uh, what are the, some of the ramifications if we're monitoring everything to such a degree? Could there be false positives? And if so, what are the ramifications for that as well? How can we prevent that from happening? So there's lots of things to consider here. Uh, we don't want to get into a situation where we're like, you know, the movie Minority Report, where we're apprehending people before they've even committed anything. But at the same time, we do want to use the tools available to help prevent violence, such as the example of what occurred with uh, the former president. So these are important things to consider. This would be a great opportunities to bring up with your students. I know most of us are in summer break, but if you are teaching summer classes, it's a prime opportunity to use the news right now to tap, tap that in with AI literacy to help students develop their capabilities here. 
this is going to be happening more and more. There's going to be more situations, more things that occur that we can use to talk about AI literacy as we get closer and closer to the election in November. So keep that in mind. Understand the different parts of what I just talked about here as far as making sure that AI is up to date. Is that a good source of information? Lots of people using it as search engines. And you can see how that isn't as effective when things happen immediately uh, thereafter. So something to consider there. Um, thinking about conspiracy theories that are going to be going on all over the place. So making sure that our students understand that, hey, when there's a conspiracy theory, we don't push that information out to others without having proper evidence, right? We can have ideas and thoughts and that's perfectly fine, but we need to make sure that it's evidence-based so that we can be using proper critical analysis. And then along with that is by using the trap technique, uh, the trap test in order to try and make sure that we're not being deceived by deep fakes or any type of synthetic information that might be going out there because AI can be used to create all sorts of things, whether that's uh, made up images, made up uh, video, made up news articles, all these things are possible. So we need to make sure that our students are aware of that by developing their AI literacy. And then finally, some ethical considerations associated with using AI because it's developing more and more and using these AI systems to help detect and prevent violence from occurring in the first place. Is that ethical? Is it not? At what point do we allow it? Do we not allow it? So these are important things for all of us to be considering, talking about, discussing, sharing, and then learning from one another. All right. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time here and going through this. This is very important, very timely, given the circumstances and what's going on. So hopefully we can use that to our benefit and continue to develop AI literacy amongst ourselves, our students, and the overall community. And remember, learning is for life. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate you listening. If you got something out of this, please like, share, and subscribe.